The decision has been made to go headless, but you've got one big problem. You've got a monolith, and you don't know how to move from that monolith into a new headless architecture. And that's what I'm gonna take you through today. I'm gonna to take you through how to move from a monolith into a headless architecture. I'm gonna take you through three ways in which you can make that move. And after I've done that, what I'm gonna do is give you a bonus. So hang around to the end and let's get to it now. So the first approach I'm gonna take you through is sawing off the head. So you probably need one of these. Not really. So what I mean by taking off the head, I mean taking off all the presentation layer, all of the templating, HTML, presentation logic, all those pieces that are embedded into the monolith that generate the final user experience to the customer. It's this approach that most architects think of first because you get to reuse everything that's already there. You get to reuse all of the business logic, all of those little workarounds that you've created over time that the business has needed. There's no change to the back office UI that you need to think about. So it's all familiar to the business users. All those really difficult integrations into your legacy backend systems are already taken care of. You don't have to deal with that. And you can build other heads built on those new common set of APIs you've developed. And you can even build a new front end on some modern day framework like React. Although this seems really attractive, at the end of the day, you're still left with a monolith except it's now got an API. So it still means that the systems are fused together, so development can be quite tricky in certain circumstances. You may also find that the APIs you end up with are very specific to the front end you currently have and are gonna be much more difficult to apply to new front end. Or you could end up with really granular APIs that are very chatty and you have a lot of problems around latency. Once you get into it and you start building the APIs, it might be really hard to do a full coverage of the system. And at that point, you've got to make some decisions about do you let a feature go or do you compromise the architecture? Another problem might be now you've got one single API, you'll find that you need to scale the system, but you might need to scale it in different parts. And if it's a monolith and it's all being fused together, it could be quite tricky to scale up the right parts of the architecture. And you might also find that the data models and the content models that are in the monolith may not be flexible enough for the front ends that you want to build. The second approach doesn't actually sound any less gruesome than the first approach. It's called the strangulation pattern. And what it does is it takes advantage of the benefits of APIs, which is the ability to incrementally implement features. So what you do in this approach is that you take your monolith, you break it into pieces, and you slowly start to replace those pieces with services from Mac-based headless vendors. And as you start to do that, over time, the monolith will technically start to suffocate until it eventually disappears. What I found is that the best way of using this approach is to actually find where the pain points are in your system, break those pieces off first and replace them with headless systems. All the common examples I've seen of this is to replace the basket and then the checkout process with a micro app plugged into a new headless service. This means you can completely reconfigure that entire part of the user journey without touching any of your legacy systems. The key benefits about doing the strangulation pattern allows you to take things one step at a time. It allows you to go at your own pace. It allows you to switch in and out different headless and Mac vendors to deal with the issues that you really have with a goal of ultimately replacing the platform in a headless architecture. So this approach is definitely the best approach for progressively building a headless architecture. So what are the downsides? The long-term costs will be much higher and it will take much longer than if you just built it all in one go. And if you're going down a micro front end pattern and have multiple teams, you've got to make sure you maintain consistency in the UX and you probably need a solid DevOps team to help the switching in and out and the intermesh of different services and systems as you're progressively moving through the monolith. And before we move on to the third approach, can I ask you all one favor? If you like this so far, can you just go down and quickly press on that like button? If you're an adrenaline junkie and you like to live life on the edge, then Big Bang is for you. This is where you start from scratch. You build an entirely new headless platform separately away from your monolith. And then when you're ready, you flip that switch and everything works. If you're lucky and it doesn't go bang, or it doesn't fizzle out, you can try and flip that switch back again and you use the monolith. So what are the benefits for this approach? Well, the cost should be lower to get to your final goal. And when you finish, you get this brand new, shiny, headless architecture. Your developers are going to start benefiting straight away from a more flexible, modern architecture. But your business users are not going to realize any real benefits until you've gone live. Having a fresh start means that you can start choosing all of the technology you want 
without any restrictions. So you can pick the best of breed headless and Mac vendors that are out there that you want for your system. You can also start to think more holistically about the entire architecture, right the way from the front end applications all the way down into the service level without having to make any real compromises to deal with the monolith that you're running. You've got to revisit all of your integrations into back office systems all in one go and make sure they work. You've got to look at the monolith and start to tease out all of the hidden business requirements, all of the logic that has been embedded over years and years of development in Monolith. You've got to extract that out all in one go and push it into your new vendor systems. One of the things I see time and time again in these approaches is neglecting to consider all of the data migration that needs to happen. All of your orders and your transactions have to be moved in one go. Yes, you can parallel run them, you can dual run them for a while, but at the end of the day, you're making that big switch all in one go rather than system by system. So now let's get through to the bonus that I promised you. So I've took you through the all three approaches. From what I've seen, no one has actually took a single path towards a single approach. Everybody has tailored these three approaches to make a hybrid approach that fits best for them. Let me give you some examples. So one of the approaches I've seen is where a business wants to start a clean slate and build their new headless architecture from scratch because they just want to get rid of all the old dependencies, all the old bits of technology and start afresh. But rather than take a purist big bang approach and just switch over to the final system, they used a headless CMS to start taking over parts of the experience until ultimately they were driving most of the experience for the headless CMS. And then once they were ready with the new headless architecture, they could actually reuse lots of the front end code and lots of the content types in the headless CMS were still relevant. So that switch wasn't quite as risky. The other approach I've seen is they cut off the head of the monolith, wrap it up in the APIs, and then they start to do the iterative approach, replacing those services a piece at a time. And you kind of get the benefits of both worlds. My final advice is when you move from a monolith to a headless architecture, first of all, think about what is the target architecture you want to move to. That will help you make some decisions early on. Also, think about what is the actual business objective? What is the purpose of moving to a headless architecture in the first place? And what are the short-term goals? It's really those things that are going to help you tailor the right approach for you to move from the monolith to the headless architecture. Before you go, can I just ask you one favor? Just scroll down a little bit, press that like button, show your appreciation, and I'll see you next time.